Julianne. How are you doing? Hi. Good. How are I'm you? Good. It's so nice that you're signing in with us today. Yes. Thank you for having me. So how's how's the family doing? Oh, they're good. We're just yeah. getting through it. Everyone's working from home and doing school from home and being in each other's space, but we're getting through. <laughs> this is definitely a new world that we're uh, working through. That's for sure. Yes. Yes. The couch is my desk some days, some days it's the kitchen table. Oh, we do, we do the same thing, we're moving. We, uh, we, we play musical chair with a laptop. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on if we have a call to make and it's really loud, we go up two levels. Yeah. Well, I, I've avoided, I've told everyone, no coming down to the kitchen after 10 o'clock today, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It's, it's an in-home schedule. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So today you wanted to have some ideas on what to make with three items. So we're going out with people and asking, if you only had three items in your fridge, what would they be? So you've come up with chicken, yes. avocado, and cauliflower. Wow, you, you didn't make it too, too easy. I know. Well, because my daughter and I eat a lot of chicken, but we're getting bored of, we need something different to do than the usual thing. And then she's all of a sudden has a newfound love for cauliflower. Up until about a year ago, she hated it and wouldn't touch it. Loved broccoli, but not that. And now all of a sudden, she loves cauliflower. So I just and I don't. I'm not used to cooking with it like broccoli. Mm -hmm. um, so just some different ideas for that. And then we eat avocado constantly. So <laughs> avocado is so good. Do you have an avocado plant behind in your backyard? Uh, we need one. Actually, my daughter just did one of those things where she did the seed thing where she's growing it in the window. So we'll see what happens. Oh, you know, oh. It's going to happen. Just keep us posted on that one, how it yeah, works. I will. We're three weeks in, so. <coughs> it's going to happen as long as you keep the heat on all the time. Yeah. In the summer and cool it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so here, here, here's my thought, okay? Yeah. So when you're looking at chicken, there is many ways you can do it. And, and you know, my first recommendation that I, that I always say to people is buy the full bird. Don't buy partial bird. Oh, okay. You can, you can, you can utilize it, you know. Um, there is skills to do it. You can actually have your butcher, if you know, take the chicken apart, okay? Right. So you have your breasts, your legs, and your bones. Your bones, you can make it for a broth, okay? Okay. Which is good for anything you want to do it, okay? And then for, 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 the, for the breast. We, or, have, we have a video online too, so I can send that to you okay. on how to debone and to it's so break easy. it up if you want. It's so okay. simple, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something you can do almost seamless, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. And then what, I, what, we, what we do have, there is something that is phenomenal we use. It's called Piri Piri Marination. It's an African Portuguese marination, which is phenomenal. Have you ever tried it before? No, no. Cool. Yeah. So this one we have it, okay, and we do it. We actually, we, we have jars everywhere, and sometimes when we do event, people ask us for the, for this little jar. Oh. The best thing about this marination is a pepper, garlic, and chili marination, and it goes with everything. You can marinate your chicken. Right. You can make a salad dressing. You can make a spicy mayonnaise. You can do absolutely anything you want. You just gotta have the drop with it. That's the thing we yeah, use. We it. make all kinds of things with it. So we have the staple pity pity, which is uh, something, the recipe's online if you wanna go take a look, or I can send it okay. to you. It's called pity pity Cornish hen. Okay. That's the recipe. It's using a Cornish hen, but you can use it for anything. So right. that marination you can. Uh, and, and the best thing about that, so what you do is you, you, you take your chicken, do you have food saver or Ziploc bag? You complete, yeah. you take it apart, keep the skin on. Don't take the skin off, okay. okay? Because the skin is going to protect from the meat to cook completely. Otherwise, it's going to become it oxidize everything. Because if you marinate too long, it partially cooks things, right? And the marination is simple. It's got some roasted garlic. It's got some chili. It's got some vinegar. You marinate it, okay? First thing in the morning. Let's say if you do it right now, you put them in a Ziploc bag, and you put them in the fridge, or you can do. Another favorite marination is a little bit of maple syrup, a little bit of soy, tons of garlic, and some fresh herbs. Any herbs you might have, yeah, whatever you have. You put it in a bag, you shake it, you rub it in the fridge for at least six hours, okay? Oh, okay. So just do it. I'd say overnight or a day. Or even overnight, yes. Right. And then, 
And then, and then the best way, so that now, now you have your accompaniments, which is the cauliflower. Right. And th there are two things you can do with cauliflower. One is something we, st we started doing, it's called cauliflower rice or cauliflower couscous. Okay. Have you ever had it? No. I've had like the, just the stuff I buy at the store in the bag like once. Well, listen, she, she actually made it for me once. And it, it's, it, very simple. it's the most simple thing to do. The only thing you need is a food processor. Okay. So what do you do? You basically, you get, you grab your cauliflower, head off. I mean, you can't explain You've got it. a food processor, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. So you, you talk. Well, what I do is I, I have a, a pot and I have a little steaming basket. Do you have a steaming basket at home? Uh, I do have a steam, like I have one of those silver ones that Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, perfect. That's exactly. Yeah, perfect. So I put that, put the whole cauliflower right plunk in there with some water, and just steam it a little bit. The the rice, or the yes. cauliflower. Yes, yeah, that's what I have. Yeah, yeah. And then you put it into, um, and then you put it into the food processor when it's partially cooked, and then just oh. it, and it makes you don't, do it, you don't use the food processor before. No, no, no because you know what you, you just want to, you want to just cook it a little bit, steam it a little bit, because you don't want to lose the nutrients of it as well, right? right. But there's other things you can do is you can you can try and spice it when you cook it. You can add some spice to it and then blitz it so it all kind of blends in together. Um, but it's a great way to do it as well. So what we do, what we do is this. It's very simple. You can do it in five seconds. Right. So you grab your cauliflower, you put it in the steamer, like Anita was saying. Sometimes you can grab the cauliflower, you spice it with some cumin, some uh, turmeric, which is very good for you, especially yeah. for Jacob, then he's vegan. Is a yep. cleanser because you need something to cleanse. So yep. turmeric, uh, coriander, uh, some salt and pepper, olive oil. You marinate it, then you steam it for what is it, a minute, two minutes maximum. You take it out of the steamer, you blitz it, and it actually gives this pebble the consisting of a rice. So I say it's a rice. He calls it a couscous because it it's so all in the wording. Yeah, <laughs> he feels it looks more like couscous because it looks <laughs> like couscous. Here. <laughs> so then you put them in a bowl. You put them in a bowl, like a, yeah. and you dress it like a salad. So what I will do, I will put limes, a lot of cilantro. Do you guys like oh, cilantro? I love cilantro. Okay, cilantro in this house doesn't last more than yeah, same with hour, you. love it. More than an hour. Okay. <laughs> I graze on it. <laughs> she goes to stores and she picks on it. And then, <laughs> she tomato, olive oil, okay. salt, lime juice. And then you fold in the avocado. And that, to me, to me is actually oh, ideal for anything, okay? Um, I'm starting to, to drill thinking of the avocado. So you're, to do that. That's like oh. a nice dinner right there. <laughs> so it's, it's a simple dinner. Like you, it yeah. Really, you can do it in five minutes. So you, you call it your couscous salad. You can't call it couscous for gluten-free people, though. But it's cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> cauliflower couscous. So you, you, you think then something like that you can do, or if you want to be more creative and you have more time to do it, the other way I would like to do, to recommend is to get the, the cauliflower, yeah. cut it in three pieces lengthwise, okay? And you actually create a cauliflower steak. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay? You marinate them. Again, spices that you have in the fridge. My recommend the spices. You can do the pity pity on the. Uh, you can do the pity pity. And then do something different with the chicken. <clears throat> and you might. You you marinate. You're just. Are, am I like rubbing the spices on it or just shaking it in a Ziploc? I would actually rub it in first. Okay. Sit for a while. And you will let it sit for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's always the best way to do it. Whenever, whenever you put in a marination, it needs a meat, it needs a fish, it needs a vegetable, whatever it is. Yeah. The minimum time to me is an hour. The minimum. Because yeah. they need to sit in. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Because if you marinate, let's say, the cauliflower in piri piri or whatever marination you want to do it, and after five minutes, you put them on a barbecue or on a cast iron skillet. Right. Because I would recommend, if you were making a cauliflower steak, I would not recommend to put them on a, on a, on a, on a barbecue if you can avoid it. I would yeah. put in a heavy skillet. Okay. okay. Why? Because you keep all the nutrients in it. The biggest part of eating vegetable is to keep your nutrients. It's also you, the marination. Too, and right? your marination. What, what's going to happen with barbecue? They're going to go all the way down to the dripping of, of yeah. the grill. And all your nutrients are gone. And the only thing you might eat is too much charcoal. Then it's not good for you at all. Yeah. So to me personally, what I would do, I would do, you know, it could be a chicken thigh. It could be a chicken breast marinated in piri piri. 
and a little couscous cauliflower salad with avocado, yeah. and you can go to town. And you can serve it with some uh, vegan cheese. Or yeah. just <laughs> I'm good with regular cheese, personally. <laughs> well, I would, I've been doing I, more. What was I, that? I was asking about the cauliflower steak. What do you cook it? Like when you put it in the frying pan, do you use olive oil to, like what? Just nothing? Very good. I love, I, I, I love that question. I, I, you know what? I wish more people would ask those kind of questions. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So I always recommend people to understand what olive oil is all about. We are doing, we, we eventually going to start doing seminars with professional people and uh, like olive oil sommelier from Europe. They're going to tell us how to use olive oil and understand it. Right. For this type of thing, for example, you are going to sear the cauliflower at a higher temperature. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Olive oil has got a high smoking point and it's actually not good for you when you sear it at a high temperature. So okay. my recommendation for that are grapeseed oil. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Grapeseed oil is the best bet whenever you're searing something at high temperature. When you're searing a steak on a, on a, on a, on a, on a cast iron pan, yeah. it's always better to use a neutral oil, like a grapeseed oil, which even if it's a high smoke point, it's not going to be bad for you, than olive oil. Olive oil, if you want to invest in olive oil, you want to do something that is good to dress a salad, to finish on a, on a, on a piece of fish or on a steak, or maybe a lower quality olive oil, then you can make a sauce for a pasta, for example, so you don't need the high temperature. Okay. But when you sear it, like for example, the cauliflower here, yeah. a, a small amount, because remember, you still got the marination into the cauliflower steak, yeah. and then sear it. If you use the piri piri, for example, yes. Let's say you marinate your cauliflower with the piri piri, yeah, which is phenomenal. It's got some of the oil already in it. it too, it's, right? it's, exactly, it's got some of the oil in it. So you, what do you do? You take a cast iron pan, you put it on the stove, a little bit of of, of uh, grapeseed oil, and then what you would do? You sear it on one side. You give at least two minutes on each side, okay? Because okay. you want a little bit of tenderness inside. Then you flip on the opposite side. Keep some of the tenders here, and then when it's done, when you feel, then you can put your on, on a thicker part of the cauliflower. You can put your knife in; it comes out easily. It's done. Okay. And you can squeeze some lemon juice if you want it, and you take it away, and that's dinner. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, you can put some you can put some cheese on it for you, <laughs> not for the other ones. Uh, and actually, that would be great. For example, a beautiful cauliflower steak with a marinated chicken. You, yeah. can do, you can do the cauliflower steak marinated in piri piri, okay? Yeah. And then you can do your chicken that is marinated with foil, lemon juice, salt, pepper, thyme, coriander. You shake it in a bag. Yeah. You put them on a barbecue now if you want it, okay? And yeah. then you slice it very thin, and then you make a little guacamole, or you can put, personally to me, I like avocado the way it is. Yes. You open it. Lemon juice, coriander, salt and pepper, nothing else. Oh, really? Uh, I, honestly, well, if, you, if, if, you, if you have good- A really good avocado. If you have a good avocado. You can bite into it like an apple. Yeah, so I, I would. Honestly, you, you okay. open it, yep. you take it out, you cut it in, in cubes, whatever you want. I put them in a bowl, a little bit of salt, lemon juice, coriander, make sure you don't chop your coriander. That's what okay. people- so the coriander, what do you want to do? You use the stem on yeah. the coriander, you cut them really thin. Okay. And you put them in. The leaf, you break them by hand, so you still, you still have a little bit of texture. So you leave the leaves leafy. Leafy, exactly. Because- The more the better. The problem, the problem is, all your flavor of the coriander is not on the leaf, it's actually on the stem. Okay. So you want to clean the root out of the coriander, you wash the stem nicely, and then you cut them okay. really, really thin fold them in and then with the leaf you actually eat them like that because almost like a salad all the nutrients all the chlorophyll is in there okay. if you chop them it's like eating grass right so don't do that oh okay good to know so what do you do you have Wait, here's my lovely avocado lunch ah. right so you got you got good avocado there oh yeah, yeah. ready to go See, that's what i'm ready to go <laughs> what is it one for one one per person or is it <laughs> 
Well, we battle over them. So those are the two that I'm like, I need those for Monday. <laughs> so what do you do? It's very simple. So that is, it's almost at the last minute. So let's say right now when you finish, you cut your cauliflower. If you have a big cauliflower, you're probably going to cut in three or four. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, get to the piri, the piri piri marination is simple and one and you know when you go in and you look at it you yeah. can make it you just you just need a blender you yep. blend everything in it and it's very red in color you put in a mason jar and you leave it in your fridge we use it for everything last what's that oh. How long will it, even though it'll probably get used quickly but oh it will last it will it will uh you know what six months or so at least oh wow it doesn't have all the preservatives and other things have in it but it's usually we make a small little jar of it but we use yeah. it for everything like we'll add it into mayonnaise and that mayonnaise will put on a burger oh okay. um there's just all kinds of different things that you can do with it you can do yeah. it in you can add it to salad yeah. dressings to add a little bit of a kick um just experiment with it it's really great we use it for soup oh yeah. So, for example, when we, when we finish a lentil soup, so if you make a lentil soup, for example, yeah. and you want just a bit of a kick and a little bit of acidity because it might be bland, yeah. what you do, you put one teaspoon, just when the soup is finished, of the piri piri, and it just changes the complexity altogether. Mm. So yeah, things like that, it's, it's simple. To make that. Yeah. yeah. Something simple. I mean, uh, nowadays people want to cook, but they also want to make things a little bit easier, then you don't spend all your time cooking. Yeah. In, in the kitchen. Exactly. And what we do, even for ourselves, we, uh, we make these little spices. For example, if I want to have, we had um, vegan, vegan burger. Okay. Yeah. So we use portobello mushrooms. So we have portobello, we use this vegan cheese, and then, but we marinate the portobello in a little pita pita. Yeah. Cast iron skillet, and off it goes. Everyone's getting bored with all the stuff that they're cooking. It's the same old, same old, right? So how do yeah. you do that a little bit differently? You run out of ideas. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing a, um, a Mother's Day class on Sunday. It's going to be a live class. Oh. And uh, so I, I imagine that I have coffee right now, but I imagine us moms kicking back with a glass of wine and watching the kids and the husband, like, cook with us. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go into another room. And you can enjoy some time reading a book while they cook with us. Yes. So uh, we got that going on in Sunday. Hide in the closet, get away from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or go on outside if it's nice weather or whatever that is. And then everyone else cooks with us and gets the meal going. So. But the biggest thing, you know, it, you know I, I found that people now, and we, we were down in the States for a while, and people get more into cooking. And, but then sometimes they say, oh, my God. It's so much work. Well, no. If you prep yourself, if you prep yourself, yeah. there's no work whatsoever. Really. Yeah. If you organize yourself with your shopping list, if you organize yourself or have a minimal amount of ingredients, because the problem is, or make I, double. I can give you a recipe, then it's got 20 ingredients. And he's like, okay, it's going to cost me more money to go outside yeah. shopping for this. So the idea is to, is to minimize the ingredient list create multiple dishes then you can actually if you don't feel like cooking tonight it's there it's ready right yeah. so you are, you have almost like you 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 select the section of things you know for jacob denise denise, denise vegan what we do and we, we i mean we done this one for almost two weeks steady because anita does not eat any more gluten and i'm trying to stay away from gluten altogether and imagine as an italian no gluten well, this is going to be a hard one. A couple of weeks ago, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I was diagnosed with an immune disorder. Oh. So I'm still in, in limbo between doctors. And so one of the big thing was gluten to, to make you feel better. So that's what we're working on now. So even though we talk about the Mediterranean lifestyle, yes, adding more gluten and dairy is other ones. So we're looking at more uh, vegan cheeses and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. so one thing, one thing we make, we make um, uh, hummus. But what we do, we get fresh chickpeas <clears throat> and we cook them and we keep them in a the fridge. But the broth of the chickpeas, we flavor it with vegetable and we use it for whatever we want. Yeah. So you make salad, you can make uh, hummus, you can make soups, you can make anything you want. But it, see what I mean? <clears throat> it's almost like you have one day that you kind of prep yourself. Yeah. Then you got to enjoy yourself. You don't want to be around cooking and slaving all every single night. No, I know. That's the problem. <laughs> 
You make extra, right? You plan, you make extra, and then you have some extra for another yeah. plan. I know with, with chicken, if I've ever done that, I've been, I get a whole bunch of breasts and I'll do the different things with them, right? So maybe yeah. do one with Petey Kitty, do one with another, just put some salt and pepper on it and a little bit of, you, you marinate it with different things and that way you have a different flavor as that fruit as well. Yeah. There is, there is so many marinades you can do. I mean, you can look it up, you know, if you go in. Uh, We've got the uh, chimichurri the as chimichurri well. Chimichurri. We have a chimichurri marination as well. And a lot of the stuff you might have in your fridge already, so it's easy to do. Yeah. Um, and add some substitutes here and there if you don't that are going to be somewhat similar. And, and send us a message if something yeah. does come up that you're missing so Daria can give a substitution. Yeah, for sure. And it's, and it's easy. Don't, don't, you know, I always say that, you know, sometimes you got to cook before a recipe. It's the best way to do it. It's what you like. You know, I often say to people, I said, I don't have a better palate than you. You have your own palate, I have my own palate. Doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that mine is better. No. You know, you exercise your own palate. I actually, every time I make something, I make her taste first. Because she actually sometimes has a better palate than I have in different no. ways. Well, it is. And I'm, I'm learning. <clears throat> but, I always, <laughs> but I always... I'm learning to go, oh, that's it tastes like now i'm getting too picky i'm like oh that's not good but that's okay <laughs> but that's but that is okay that is yeah. okay. that is important yeah. then you actually develop the knowledge to say you know what uh, that's not and, and that's okay it's constructive criticism because at least you yeah. understand what everybody in the house wants to eat and you know yeah. in your case then you have multiple menus going on yes it, it's almost like you want to create a template of what you want or what you might need, it could be avocado, it could be a chickpea. And trust me, I'm, I'm saying chickpea now because it's so versatile. You're getting it out of the three elements, right? <laughs> <laughs> We have chickpeas too, so it's all good. We love doing things with chickpeas. I love it, too. I love it. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of stuff. Piri Piri, try it. I will, for sure. Well, okay. thank you for joining us today. This has been wonderful. Yeah, thank you. And hopefully we'll connect again. So Absolutely. Okay. So go on over to Pasha's Cooking and take a look at the recipe and I'll send it to you as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Bye.